Guild Wars 2 is getting its new expansion, End of Dragons. Myself and Josh played Guild Wars 1 originally, and of course also Guild Wars 2 at its launch quite a few years back now, and recently we were considering trying the expansion to finally step back into the game. After all, you know, an expansion is a good time to try an MMO when everyone has a fresh experience. Then, incredibly, around the time that we actually were thinking about this, they contacted us to play the expansion early and create some sponsored content. So yeah, we were up for that. A huge thank you then to Guild Wars 2 for sponsoring this video, especially when we were actually already interested in the game and covering MMOs. I was lucky to be part of a special event where we were able to play the game early, guided through various bits of content by some of the Guild Wars 2 team. We were given great context to the world and what we're actually doing in it, and we're given a chance to try some of the updated classes and gameplay and new features of the game. The session was only a brief 90 minutes or so, but I got to see a fair amount in that time. We thought it would make for a good video to talk about what we saw and what I thought about it all. So join me for this early look at some of the new Guild Wars expansion End of Dragons, which releases very soon on February 28th. To begin with, we had a choice of the various classes of the game, using a pre-made character that was sort of boosted to be strong enough for the content we're going into. Now, because Guild Wars uses a special weapon swap system, every class actually has a few weapons it can equip, and each weapon has totally different abilities and sort of skill sets. If I were to pull up my skill tree, I'd be able to change a lot of how this even works, swapping weapons to totally different combat styles, each weapon coming with its own abilities to choose between. To say the least, jumping in, you know, blind, it was a lot to take in, but it was really cool to see this amount of variety and options for actually creating builds. Ultimately though, I had picked the Ranger. The classes have new elite specs in this expansion, and the Ranger's is called Untamed, which is sort of a Beastmaster type in which you are enhancing the power of your pet alongside yourself. This is something I saw a lot of the players react well to when I looked at the official trailer for this class, since this sounds like something the Ranger players have actually been asking for for a long time. My weapons though were the bow and the dual wielded weapons of axe and sword. This made for a nice mix of ranged and melee combat alongside the buffs and summons of the spec itself. In combat, I found a nice flow. I'd start with my ranged abilities, using direct shots on my target, bursts of arrows, area of effect volleys, and even had a stealth shot that could get me out of bad spots if they were to happen. While I had my melee weapons out though, I noticed I had a sort of shield effect on my offhand, so maybe giving me extra protection. The melee attacks themselves though were pretty versatile. One was the thrown axe for a mid-ranged ability. One let me just stand there and swing my weapons wildly, sort of channeling an AoE attack. One let me dash in and then even roll around the target to get behind it to sort of quickly reposition up close. And finally, we had one to leap backwards out of melee to get me back into ranged and then obviously logically pull out my bow, which abilities should be off cooldown again. So yeah, this made for a cool flow of the combat, in and out, ranged and melee, which came super handy for the boss fights, which do use a lot of telegraphed danger zones so I could move around those effectively. The abilities on the right side of the bar then, not the weapon ones, but my class abilities, these were things like powerful heals, ghost summons, self and party buffs, and of course, buffing up the pet and my player at the same time. I tried to maintain these buffs once I was getting used to the gameplay, and when I did, I found my abilities were going out faster, alongside my character moving around like lightning. Obviously, a main part of this class, though, is the Beast Companion. Uh, I found a huge variety of beasts I could summon on this character, depending on if I was on land or water as well. There's new pets coming in this expansion, which I spotted greyed out in the summon list at the bottom. There was the young Siege Turtle, White Tigers, Wallows, and even a Phoenix. But I imagine we have to unlock those in the new content before we'll be able to use them. So there's some combat and information about the Ranger class that I was trying. Let's talk about the session itself. I actually spawned in a little late and had to sort of catch up with the rest of the event players who were underway on a quest to take this stronghold, which was meant to be claimed as a guild hall. The quest itself took us around various sections of this area and the guild hall. We're basically defeating the people who were here, defeating their leaders to take this place. The boss fights had some reasonable challenge to them, dealing high damage to their target and also dropping a lot of danger zones on the floor to avoid, and continuously the bosses became a bit more difficult and more involved with those mechanics. The final boss was teleporting around and using lightning magic to spiral out zones of lightning that you had to avoid, as well as these ghost summons that slammed the ground with these huge rings of damage. There was this little tiny safe spot in the center of those slams, so you had to react really quickly and get in the middle of those. In the end though, we were able to capture the hall and take it from this creepy version to a more homely version 
in theory. Uh, unfortunately, we were not allowed to do that in this event. I think we're saving that for later. Something I really appreciated while I was playing all of this, though, is definitely the movement of the game. We have these really cool options for traversal. We have gliders that can be used when leaping from a high spot to glide on down from, and the main mounts. Now, I always heard that the mounts of Guild Wars were some of the best in MMOs. Each mount has this different purpose. So you mount it, and then you have abilities. There's ones that let you leap up into the air and glide more effectively than a glider, or ones that let you hop up and over terrain that you otherwise wouldn't be able to traverse. There was this beetle thing that let me sprint around, just rolling around like at super speed. And there was a jackal that had a literal teleport blink forward, for example. So every mount that I tried functioned totally different with a different purpose letting you traverse the world in a variety of ways, depending on what you currently need, which is a great design. Of course, in this expansion, a main detail they're doing is a new mount, right? They're introducing the Siege Turtle, which is apparently their very first full direct combat mount. It's also a two-person mount with its own health to manage. So you've got one player piloting the turtle, who is hovering and gliding around, and then slamming the turtle down for big damage. Well, the second player is manning the guns, so they're dropping bombs via the cannons uh, for targeted bursts of air. AOE, or they're supporting the driver with buffs. As a combat mount, it seemed very effective against huge packs of enemies like Hay and the events they had us playing, but I also think it'll be really strong as a mount in general for traversal. You know, it's surprisingly quick, and it can also leap up and hover around, so it's actually pretty good for getting around the terrain. They mentioned that while we can just sort of try them now during this test, players will actually have to earn these mounts and seemingly raise the turtle for war. Definitely a worthy reward then for this effort because it was very effective when we used it. There was actually an event though where they spawned in a bunch of these turtles uh, used by NPCs that could give players a chance to try them much earlier. Before we did any of that though, fishing. Well, our attempt at fishing anyway. Over in the Seitung province, an island to the north of that guild hall event, we were conceptually introduced to fishing. A special event was here, right, on this shoreline. It was a fishing competition to catch as many fish as possible in a short time. And here we were shown the skiffs, which are the special multiplayer boats that are pretty ideal for fishing, letting you and your party go out on the waters and fish from more direct locations instead of just standing on a dock or a shore. The skiffs have some neat features. The driver can boost around the boat for extra speed, while the passengers have emotes they can use that sort of encourage the driver, and that recovers that boost energy faster. And while we were meant to be competing with one another in this event, apparently there's a special effect to fishing with friends. You have higher chances to capture rarer fish. Now, fishing is obviously far from a new concept, but after seeing the mount system, I'm not actually that shocked to see all these little extra details that they've got in the design that encourages players to work together like, hey, you know, an MMO should. We were told that they want to give you more reasons to do things together specifically, and this design is a clear example of that. Unfortunately, we weren't able to try actual fishing in this event due to time constraints, but just after seeing that skiff system, I'm very interested to see how this works at launch. Obviously, you have a rod, but there's also baits and lures to use as well. And with the competitions like that event, they're clearly giving us more than a throwaway fishing minigame, which is nice to see. But lastly, we moved on to the Echo Veld Wilds, which is an area to the east, which was a larger landmass than the areas we played before. It was explained to us that this is actually a location in Guild Wars 1 that players should be familiar with, the home of the Kursix, who were defeated by the Ministry of Purity. Essentially, they were absorbed into Kantha society. This whole area is known as Kantha. This is part of the Kantha Empire. The people in this region, though, are more considered outsiders, people who aren't fitting into that society very well, and they feel more home in the wilderness. People here are more suspicious of the Jade tech, which is very prominent in Kantha. It's just pretty interesting, since the very next thing we do is challenge the Jade Brotherhood who are here. You might also recognize them from Guild Wars 1. Apparently, this Jade Brotherhood has gone a bit off the deep end, though, pushing Jade tech past what's considered ethical. We find that the Jade Brotherhood here are performing experiments on the people and otherwise bullying and terrorizing the population. So we went on this mission to investigate and ultimately invade a research facility of the Jade Brotherhood, resulting in this large-scale assault that you see here. We had to use the siege turtles to break the shields of the walls, letting us breach inside, which contained essentially an army of Jade machines. This is the event I mentioned earlier in which players could get an early chance to try the war turtles actually. Down below 
below though, in the facility, we find experiments of the Brotherhoods in cells. They're like modified beasts, which functioned as a gauntlet of mini bosses we had to sort of survive and get through. Beyond that though, was the final room, the final vault. It's a machine called God's Vengeance, which is another reference to Guild Wars 1. It's a supercomputer that we needed to destroy. It was no pushover though. It would suck us in like a black hole. There was AOE things on the ground everywhere, and it constantly summoned in the most enemies we had to fight at once. This was my first time I actually got downed during the play session. This is something that happens in Guild Wars where you, you die and then you get downed and you have a chance to either be revived by an ally or you can kill an enemy and get up yourself. After defeating the computer though, there was a secret treasure room full of chests with loot, which should be a common find after a siege like this one. And that's everything we got to see during the event. It was pretty short and sweet, honestly. It's a shame what happened with, you know, the fishing and not being able to do that. But overall, I found myself not struggling to get into it, you know, the combat felt smooth once I was going. And I couldn't help but like look at all the other stuff my character has and wondering could I experiment with this? But you know, we were going on to the next thing, the next thing, it was hard to keep up. I think the events are pretty cool though. You know, you're working with a lot of different players to benefit you in PVE content, as well as like the casual side of the fishing mechanics where you're supposed to work together to get different benefits. There's this community focus, which I really appreciate here. And I would love to see in like the live game. I've also been told that the end game of Guild Wars 2 is pretty anti-grind. There's this idea that when once you reach the strong equipment, that's going to be relevant for a really long period. So you don't have to worry about that all the time, logging in constantly to just keep up. And they also let me know, I should tell you about the new player guide, which we should have linked in the description. It's an official page on the website that just kind of gets you to grips with the basics of the game. So you have the context of that going in. And I found it useful, you know, looking at that before I did this session. Yeah, I enjoyed myself. I, I enjoyed this session. I think the setting is really nice. Having the, you know, the team describe the context of what we're doing made me much more engaged in it. And apparently, obviously, that's going to be explained when you play and you go through the story yourself. So if you'd like to check out the game yourself, though, maybe jump into the new expansion. We do have a link for you to use in the description. We're going to be making more videos on the game soon throughout the launch. So look forward to that. And it's been very nice to sort of jump back and play some Guild Wars 2 again, even in this small session, because the combat, it still somehow feels pretty smooth after all this time. For now though, I've been Hollow, you've been you. Thanks for watching. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos. Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes. Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice. To reiterate that it is nice. To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage. Is, uh, goodbye.